Monday, everybody, about 3.30. Back over to complete, hopefully, sanding work on the bonnet here. Very, very cold here. I think it got to about uh, 7 degrees for a high today. So, unfortunately, I didn't uh, crank the heat up a little bit extra in the garage. So, while I had intended to get epoxy primer on the bonnet tonight, that's not going to happen. The, the bonnet itself is only about 64 degrees metal temperature in the can of paint that's sitting over there, closer to the uh, exterior wall is unfortunately about 63 degrees and that stuff should be above 65 for at least 24 hours so i've got the this spot in here to to finish sanding out and then the rest of these spots all over here to, to finish sanding out so i'm going to go with that this evening and then i'll move on and start working on the body itself in the interim i got a nice box from rimmer brothers today and I'm going to open it here. I haven't opened it yet at all. We'll open it together and see what we got. All right, so I placed this order uh, a week or so ago, two weeks ago probably now. It was back ordered for a little bit, but I think they shipped it. Today's, mon or today's Monday. I think they shipped it on Friday. So it uh, stuff gets here pretty fast for me. Of course, being on the East Coast, that's an advantage. But there's the uh, packing list. So we'll see what we got here. They're usually very, very good about packing this stuff. As far as strength, normally everything's stapled. But uh, what I've got here today doesn't really need staples. Headlight harness right there. And a wiring harness. Left hand drive wiring harness for the United States for the Mark II. And then you the um, the headlight kit for the headlight headlamps is, is separate wiring with the bullet lamps. That's something separate. So this is made in England by AutoSpark. Or Auto Sparks, I can't remember, there's an S on the end of it. I looked these guys up separately. Um, good reputation, good quality, everything's original as far as wire coloring and all that kind of stuff goes. You should check out the website. They must make wiring harnesses for literally hundreds if not thousands of different applications vehicle wise. Pretty impressive. But it was between this place and British Wiring out of the United States. So Rimmers put this on sale. I took advantage of the 17% off sale that they had uh, running. And uh, I want to say it was 166 pounds for the wiring harness and like I don't know, 15 pounds or something for the for the uh, headlight harness there. Normally on the Auto Sparks website they run 184 pounds. So after it was all said and done, including shipping and everything, I got the full wiring harness and the uh, the headlight harness shipped to my door for uh, about 270 bucks. If you source just the wiring harness by British Wiring, that they also put out quality stuff. You're looking at uh, 400 plus, I believe, for that. So, again, as much as I hate to send my money overseas, you know, almost half price is, is uh, you know, 60%, 70% um, of the cost of something you get in the United States. That's why I love Rimmer. So, I'll open it up, open the bag up here, just this one, check it out real quick. But then this is, uh, this is going to go back home. It's not going to stay here in the garage to get all dirty and dusty. So everything looks really well, well wrapped. Got a couple wires here that are bitter ends of wires. Um, I don't know what's going on there. I don't know if that's for... Uh, I don't know, I'll have to figure that one out. Um, but everything else in here, you can see all the light sockets and everything for the gauges. That's all. Um, they're all brand new and everything. And let's see, where's the flasher guy? Should be a flasher guy around here somewhere. There's that inline fuse. That guy's there. The heavy, heavy wiring for the uh, going up to the ignition on the firewall. Should be a flasher guy around here somewhere. I don't know what that is. Oh, there it is. There's the uh, the flasher for the uh, turn signal. That guy there. So yeah. So again, these have uh, pretty good. Uh, 
reputations. I believe this is the aft. I say aft like I'm in the Navy or something. I think this is the rear har harness, so this will go back to the tail lights and all that kind of stuff. And uh, again, I'm not quite sure what's going on with the bitter ends here. I'll have to figure that out. But everything else looks, uh, looks like it's uh, going to be fun and interesting. Everything looks very tightly wrapped. Um, half lap, double wrap is what we used to call it in the Navy when we would wrap wiring. So you would wrap everything twice and you would wrap it the, as you would go around. Each wrap would cover half of the previous wrap and that was the half wrap, double lap. So uh, this is at least that, if not more than that. So pretty uh, looks to be pretty well done here. So we'll put this back, even though I love looking at this kind of stuff, and uh, get to actual work. All right, got these uh, all those areas blocked out. No surprises. Happy with how all that feels. A couple high spots in here, but I can't really, as you can see with the sandpaper, but I can't really feel them. So I don't think I'm going to mess with them at all. What I did do is I hit this front nose portion here with some guide coat spray paint stuff again. I just want to make sure that that's in pretty good shape. I found uh, a couple spots in here that probably need some some spot putty, glazing putty, and I think this area right here, I didn't come over enough with the glazing putty to get that either, so I'm going to look into that. But I'll just block that out real quick, hit any spots that need it with the glazing putty, and in the interim while waiting for all that stuff to cure, I'll get back over to the body there and continue on with sanding off the fiberglass filler. All right, second round of glazing putty applied. Put it on a kind of thick, maybe a little too thick in a couple spots, but, you know, so be it. I'll, uh, I'll work these out here, let this cure up and work this out. In the meantime, like I had mentioned, I'm going to go over to the body and take the, uh, the sander to it again. Got those spots filled with glazing putty. Happy with the way that's come out. So uh, I still need to go over this with uh, 220 and 320. Or out, I'll go out to 220 with it since I'm going to go to another layer of epoxy. Um, so I still need to do that yet, but that's uh, pretty happy with uh, the way that nose feels. Pretty flat. Filled those couple spots. You can still see some artifacts and everything in here, but I really can't feel any of that stuff. Or if I can, I'm having trouble because I'm getting the, the bend in the, uh, the nose there. So I'm hoping that the um, build primer will help me out there, so we'll see. The bonnet has been sanded down 150, 220 and red scuff pad. So it's still really dirty and really dusty. I'm not going to waste the wax and grease remover on it now because I would just hit it again anyway. But for the temperature requirements, and I can't tell you how tempting it is to, to bite the bullet on two degrees of, of paint temperature, but I'm just not going to do it. Uh, she's ready for epoxy primer. So I'll see if I can sneak over here sometime this week, maybe and get two coats on real quick, but I'm not too sure. I might have to wait till the weekend. I'd really like to get it on because then uh, that kind of wrecks any further work. However, not like I don't have a lot of work over here, so I'm going to get to uh, about an hour or so, hour and a half left here this evening. I'm going to get to, to hitting, on, uh, hitting on this guy. So for the rest of the night, I think I'm going to concentrate up here on the bulkhead. Um, if you remember, I did this repair. Just a, just not a good job. This Between this and that rear uh, rear fender, those are my two worst repair jobs I did on the car by far. Uh, I actually went back in and, and replaced this little square patch, but I got a lot of uh, distortion and everything in there. I don't know how well you can see that, but it's definitely not flat. The other problem is, is it's pitted all to heck, so it's hard to know what really should be flat and what shouldn't be flat, so I'm going to hammer and dial it a little bit, see what I can do. I already put fiberglass on it. That was a mistake. I should have waited for the hammer and dolly work. So I may, uh, I don't know, the fiberglass may break off. I'm not sure what'll happen. I don't really care. But you can see all the little pitting that's in there from the rust and everything. And my intention with that is I've already scuffed it up and uh, I'm gonna hit it with just regular old filler. No fiberglass stuff, I don't think, because um, it, it's got epoxy on it. I'm not worried about strength or anything like that. And I also have a couple more spots that I missed up around here on my battery tray replacement. So I'll get uh, some fiberglass filler mixed up hopefully for that as well. But uh, that's the path I'm going to be moving down for the rest of the night, I think.
right, so I don't know how well you can see this right here, but this was a huge low spot. That is glob filler on. I just smacked it up a little bit. Um, I could see the hammer. I used the, uh, the, the uh, pointy end. I'm sure that's got a proper name. Yeah. Anyway, you could see that the blows kind of sh discoloring the, the uh, fiberglass. I don't know if you saw that on video. Probably not. It was pretty subtle. But uh, now I'm going to take my uh, air orbital sander and just try to take that stuff right off of there. Take that back. I'm going to use the DA sander because uh, I don't have a disc on the other one. And I don't want to get a new disc out just for this. All right, so you can see there's still some fiberglass. Well, maybe you can't. Let me see if I zoom in here. Still some fiberglass here. I'll try to knock that up. Real big high spot there. Now, frankly, I'm not real concerned about this because, just because I'm not that concerned about it, but this is actually uh, working out better than I thought it would, so. I got some oil cannon. So I am going to lift it up. Not that it's going to matter. Let's see if I can just suck that high spot out right there real quick with the uh, high spot removal tool. The heck's this called? Come on. Shrinking disc. No more uh, pop there, still a little bit of flex, but that's all right. And I think that I am happy with all of that now. All right, so for the most part, I'm happy with that. There's one more little low spot right there that I'd like to get out. Using the fiberglass as a guide coat, actually. One little moon in there. I don't know how well you can see that little gray and dark spot fiberglass. Try to get that out. All right, one more low spot right there, and I promise I'm done. All right, so now that that's done, I'm going to go around one more time and hit all the spots where I want to put the filler in for the pitting with 180 grit just to scuff it up, make sure it's all good. Get those couple more spots that I missed over there for fiberglass filler and then get uh, regular filler on the pits and then fiberglass, two batches of separate filler here obviously, two batches and uh, fiberglass on the, the weld repairs that were bubbled a bit. Alright, so got the filler down. Fiberglass filler here, tried to make that corner round out a little bit to try to match that one. You can see that little glob there, that's uh, braze. I didn't braise anything, so I'll sand that out and see how that comes out. But uh, a little awkward getting into the nooks and crannies, especially behind the dash supports there. But uh, another pitch for the real thin putty knives, and never would have been able to do that without getting a little one inch wide, real thin and flexible metal putty knife in there instead of a piece of plastic. Never would have been able to get it on as well. So hopefully it sands out as well. I'm not going to kill myself too much. This is still requires some attention as far as, as uh, filler went. I kind of ran out. But uh, I'm going to call it a night because, believe it or not, I have to go home and make meatloaf for dinner tomorrow. Yes, meatloaf. All right, that's it for me tonight, folks. Got to be uh, a little while before I get back over here, probably, unless I get to sneak over here and put epoxy on it. So I'm going to uh, eventually edit this video up and get it before my uh, next garage visit or my next major garage visit. Thanks very much for watching, liking, and commenting. Subscriber count still going up. It's pretty cool. And uh, otherwise... Good, uh, good amount of work. That bonnet's ready to get back into epoxy in the high build, and I can't forget I got to do the underneath of it. So 
that'll be another uh, challenge to get that flipped over and hopefully not cause any damage to it. So we'll see. So have a good rest of your week. Stay warm because I already got the car warming up for me. Cheers.